It's 3.30 a.m. and we made it! Okay, so today in the daylight, I am in the beautiful city of Genoa. The great enemy of the Venetian Empire, it's on the western side of the Italian peninsula, so closer to Spain and Portugal than the Byzantine Empire, which will be very important for our next part of the story. So the Italian city-states were birthed by warfare. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire to the Ostrogoths, all the city-states were left to fend for themselves, building high walls and large navies. Trade that used to be conducted within the peninsula was now really, you couldn't really do it because trade and war do not mix. So trade started to be done within the Mediterranean, giving a lot of money, power, and prosperity to the port cities of Venice and Genoa. We're gonna be talking a lot about Genoa versus Venice. Both became really important trading hubs during the Middle Ages because both Genoa and Venice are at the most south point that still connects mainland Europe to the Mediterranean. One of the main differences between the two is that in Genoa, trade was managed by private merchants and banks, while in the Venetian economy, it was controlled by the state, which was more reliable because it meant that the partnerships with Venice were backed by the state itself. So Venice and Genoa were both kind of competing trading hubs, but Venice fared better because it was closer to Constantinople. And remember, the wealth and the accumulation of wealth was more prominent in the East than in the West during the Middle Ages. Nevertheless, both empires prospered enormously because of trade. In Genoa, you could find diverse goods, including spices, coral, African wool, and gold. And it also developed its local textile industry. Blue cotton cloth was a Genoese product. In fact, the word jeans owes its very name to the French pronunciation for Genoa, jean. But a big industry with slavery. They came mostly from uh what is now uh, Croatia, Dalmatia, so the Adriatic coast. So they would raid uh, the coastal towns for young girls and boys, and then they would sell them to, uh, especially the Arabs uh, merchants in the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, so that was a very flourishing trade. Not normally mentioned, but yeah, because it's less honorable than trading in spices for sure, <laughs> yeah. So Venice and Genoa grew enormously because of trade and they became the main shipbuilders for Europe. <laughs> so Venice and Genoa became the main shipbuilders for Europe. The Crusaders, when they would come down to Genoa and Venice, they would ask for a fleet and a lot of boats, pretty much as big as this one. This is a prop, but it just kind of gives you an idea of what they were looking for. And then the Crusaders would go to the holy city of Constantinople and sack them. And not to be uh, omitted that both the Venetians and the Genoese were corsairs, so they would raid the ships of the Muslim um, um, traders. Uh, and so it was a trade war, really. Uh, so the Muslim ships would raid the Christian ships and vice versa, so they would steal each other's goods. Far, the trading networks expanded from Genoa, we're going to talk about the Black Death. So, some historians believe that the Black Death actually came from a Genoese port in Asia called Kafka, and the infected rats buried themselves within the ships that were then brought to Genoa and brought to the Black Death and murdered like one third of the population of Europe. So the Venetians fought lots of wars, but especially with Genoa. Genoa was their primary rival of the Mediterranean. Venetians and Genoese fought over five wars during the 13th and the 14th centuries. During this time, a Venetian general, Marco Polo, was captured. While he was in prison, he wrote about his travels in China. So in a strategic move, Genoa tried to invade Venice from both land and sea. 
but in a surprising turn of events, because Venice was armed with its famous galleys, it was able to hold off the Genoese attack. After many more battles and many more wars, Venice and Genoa finally declared peace. Both very, very tired of war. Making the makeshift station. Okay, there we go. This is kind of an interesting position. Ah, yes. Okay, there we go. Can you see me? Can you see me? I've recorded this like twice. Sometimes my microphone does not work, but it's okay. Continuing on with the story. So in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. And why was this so detrimental to Genoa? Well, because Genoa and Venice became these powerful cities in Europe because of trade, because there was trade happening within the Mediterranean. But as soon as Columbus sailed the ocean blue, discovered the Americas, the powers of the French, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the British, their trade now started to happen in the Atlantic instead of the Mediterranean. So this took out money, it took out trade, it took out promotion, it took out everything that the cities that Venice and Genoa had to offer. But eventually Genoa was really absorbed into the Spanish influence sphere in the 16th century. Um, and the, the Genoese became uh, kind of the providers of the navy to the Spanish for a while. So that's how it managed to remain afloat. Obviously this happened a lot slower. So it wasn't like, you know, like Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue and then everybody in Genoa was... <laughs> but the seeds of kind of their own downfall and destruction as a maritime empire started because other European powers had other networks of trade and they no longer needed Genoa the same way that they needed them before because trade doesn't die down that quickly. Okay, so behind me we have Christopher Columbus's house and so Christopher Columbus was a very controversial figure. I mean, on one hand he was the bringer of death and destruction for the people in the Americas but on the other, he was also the person who kind of started the age of discovery, of exploration for Europe. So on one hand, he's seen as a hero, on the other, kind of like the devil himself. But regardless, that is his house, and he was born here. So let me know what you guys think. Okay, so with this ends the video. I hope you liked it. If you do, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and stay tuned because there will be a lot more videos coming up that will hopefully have this more elegant sort of status. Let me know what you guys think with the interviews and the new editing style. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye.